Hello, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to take, let me run this again, how to have an object on the screen store a history of its path. Now, this object just happens to be a bouncing ball. It's bouncing up and down, but you could maybe have something move in a spiral pattern or something move along a sine wave or use something called Perlin noise or move randomly, or maybe you've watched some of my other videos where I show how to have things respond to forces. The point is, you have something that you've already programmed to move around the screen. What if you want to draw a trail or to have that history of its path uh, for some other purpose? I feel like this comes up a lot. So on the one hand, you might already say, oh, I know how to do this, right? Because in the basics of using an environment like processing or P5.js, there's this background function, and the background function erases the background. So if you were to take the background function from draw, which is continuously erasing the background, and move it into setup, now, we can see this object is drawing a trail, and you can barely see it moving anymore, which is something that I should have considered probably, but you can see that it's drawing a trail, but it's kind of, this is not really a good solution because A, it's just continuously drawing its trail forever. I can't have some things draw one trail, some things not draw a trail, some things draw a long trail, some things draw a short trail. I can't have the things in the trail changing color or moving according to their own set of principles. So in order to do something, anything, any idea that you have that's a bit more sophisticated beyond just see the thing sort of like smearing a trail of its path along the screen, you're gonna need to keep that background in draw and figure out a way for the object itself to store a history of its own path. So let's think about how we might do that. I feel obligated to use the whiteboard for a second even though I don't know that it's necessary. So let's kind of unpack this a little bit. We have on the screen, we have a circle. Maybe it's moving, maybe it's your program, it's some sort of like ant-like, insect-like creature and it's moving around and what you want is for it to have almost like um, this like body that it pulls along along its path um, in some type of way. Oh, this would be a good topic for a video looking at uh, inverse kinematics, all that stuff to create like a skeleton. Ooh, that's gonna be good. We'll do that in another video. Here, we just want the trail. So the object, if we think of this object as called a particle, as a very generic term for a thing moving around the screen, um, this particle has an X, this particle has a Y, and now, what does this particle need? In addition to the X and the Y, it needs to have something that I'll call a history. And that history can be an array. Because what this particle will do is it stores its x, y as its current location, but another property of it is actually an array where it can keep track of older x and y's, and older x and y's, and older x and y's. So let's look at how that might be done. So if I come back over here to this particular example, you can see the basics of the code, right? There's a particle object, it makes a new particle object in setup, and then that particle object update and show. Where all of the code, where all of the stuff for that particle object is, is over here in this constructor function. And you can see it's just got some basic stuff. It has an x and a y variable. It has a y speed variable, because all this thing is doing is moving up and down. Um, it changes y by y speed, it changes y speed by gravity, it checks if it gets to the bottom, and if it gets to the bottom, it reverses its direction, and then it also has a function to display itself. So what I'm suggesting to you here is the first thing that we need to do is add another property to this object. The way that we add a property to this object is by saying this object, this thing, this particle thing that's going to be made through this constructor function, this dot, the name of that property, and I'm gonna call it a history and I'm going to make it an array. So this is a wonderful thing about working in JavaScript. I'm, um, after I do this video, I'll make a version of this code in processing, and I'll upload both examples. So you have the P5 and the processing version. But the JavaScript version will be a little bit simpler because an array in JavaScript natively is a thing that you can just start as an empty thing and start filling it with stuff. Whereas in processing in Java, um, I'll have to build the example with something called an array list, and I will link to other videos about how array lists worked at some point there. So, okay, so this is our first start here. We make this history variable. So what do we do with that history variable? Every time the object updates its location, every time it moves, I want to store where it previously was. How do I do that? So how do I add something to an array? So this is the update function right here. Right? This is where the y, its x and y location might change. It's moving around the screen. So what I want to do is add something here where I say this dot history 
And I want to somehow, I want to like add something into this history. So the way that you add something to an array in JavaScript, it, a way that one, there's many ways you can do it, but one way you can some, to add something to the end of that array is with a function called push. So if I were to say push.x, what I'm doing is I'm saying take this object's current x location, and by the way, I can't say x. Ah. I have to say what? Uh, JavaScript. This.x. I have to take this object's current x and put it into the array. So if I did this and ran this program, every time it updated, it would say save its x in the array, save its x in the array. And that array would just become full of its x locations. And we could do something amusing. I don't know how amusing this would be. I'm going to say print its history out. And you can see here, <laughs> right? I'm, getting, I'm printing out these arrays, and there's just tons of values of 100 because its x is never changing. So why don't I put its y in there? And you can see, ah, look, the y values are just being stored. The history of its y values are being stored in that array. Oh, well, maybe I should put both the x and the y. And you can sort of see now that array has x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So interesting, in the push function, you can just push a bunch of things in the array by separating them. But this is, this, while this is fine, um, it's worth noting that something that's going to make our life much easier uh, to do this particular example is using something called a vector. So let me come back over here for a second and talk briefly about what a vector is if you haven't encountered it before, and I'm probably going to do some other videos that go through this stuff in more detail. But let's say I have an object. Oh, this pen is terrible. Um, let's say I have an object whose location is at an x and a y. I could have separate x and y variables, or I could have a variable that I'll call a vector and what I could do in P5 is I can call a function called create vector and give it two values. Can you see that? You can. I've gone off the, here, look, live fixing, live editing. This is what I do with live editing. I'm just going to move the camera a little bit so you can see that. Um, <laughs> so instead of having a separate x and y variable, I can have a single variable using the create vector function to put an x and y in. How, why, why does that work? Why is that relevant? Well, a vector is essentially, one way of thinking of a vector is as an arrow or directions for how to get from one place to another. And here, in this case, an object's location is a vector for how to get from the origin to where it's actually being displayed. And the, you can think of this as a triangle with a y component and an x component. So this arrow is a vector. So instead of that big array that I want to fill, Instead of trying to put an x, then a y, then an x, then a y, then an x, then a y, it'll be much simpler if I say, let's put a vector, an x, y, and then put another vector, another x, y. So I can kind of group the history as its position is this x, y. Then its position was this x, y. That history is a whole bunch of vectors. So over here now, if I come back to the code, what I want to do is I'm going to say var uh, v, or a v equals create vector this dot x this dot y and I'm now going to push that vector into the array and run this again and so now as this program is running as this is running over and over again this history array is getting like bigger and bigger and bigger let's take a look at that let's let's look in the console at this dot history dot length so you can see as the program is running, I'm just storing over and over again a vector for every single point that this object has ever been. So right, if I wanted to draw a trail of everywhere it's ever been, then I can simply do that <laughs> pretty easily because I have all those points in an array. I feel like I pause to ask questions, but I can't pause because I'm just making this as a video. Um, OK, so we've now we've got the core mechanic here now which is just this, which is just like every time as the object gets updated, take its current location, save a copy of it, store it in the array. So let's do something with that now. Let's, in the display function, I could always now say, I could have a loop to go through that entire array, and I could draw, uh, and of course I'm forgetting to say this, this, and now this is a little bit, what I think might be worth uh, 
doing here is make a variable called position, which is this dot history uh, index i. So here what I'm doing is, right here, this is an important little thing to look at for a second, is I want, when I'm going to draw this object, in addition to drawing its current x, y, I'm going to go through and loop through the entire history and pull out each and every spot in the history, index 0, index 1, index 2. And those things are vectors. And I'm going to store them in a variable called pause for position. And now, if I want to draw another circle there, I can just say pause.x, pause.y. Uh, and I'll make this a smaller circle. And we can see now, if I run this program, you can see it is drawing a circle at every spot in its history. And now, you know what? I, I had this idea where like, oh, a bouncing ball is going to make sense. And I just, I just don't like it anymore. Um, let's, um, let's get rid of this idea of Y speed and grab. Let's just be much simpler about this. And uh, let's just chain and let's get rid of this bouncing thing. Let's just do what I originally set out to do, which I think will demonstrate this idea much better, uh, which is just to have it move randomly. So I'm just changing this particle to instead of bouncing up and down, to have it move randomly. So you can see now as it's moving randomly, it's leaving a circle everywhere it's ever been in its path. And I, do, I am erasing. I am erasing the background each time. So this allows me to do lots of different things. For example, uh, you know, each one of those circles could be drawn randomly. Their, uh, their size could be random. You know, just so you can see here, I don't, I don't know what the value of this is, but you can see that those things can be animated in their own way. I don't particularly like what I've done with randomness, <laughs> but there's a lot of possibilities there. So this is the simple idea, right, that instead of just drawing a circle at its location, also store a, an array, also keep track of an array that stores a copy of its location over time and draw something there. So I want to add a few things to this. Number one is I think it might make sense to limit that history, right? So one thing we could say is if this dot history dot length is greater than uh, 25, Then this.history.splice, splice is a function that allows you to pull out things from the array. And I, the oldest thing in the array is the first thing, index number 0. And I want to just take one thing out of the array. So the splice function takes two arguments, the index where you want to delete something and how many things you want to delete, which is just one. So now if we run it, you can see. And let's have it move uh, at, a, at larger steps. So you can see here, and goodbye, it left the screen. Those are too large. Um, <laughs> let me, I came back, that was nice of it. And we could do something like have its size just be i. So you can see that, um, come back. OK, well, let's do something else too. OK, ha, so here's the amazing thing about doing this. I only have one particle. And this is like, and first I have this like tiny window, so just so we can see more stuff happening. Um, let's put that in the middle. So, uh, oh, whoops, oh, and it's, uh, oh, editor, you should have changed your size, but you didn't. Um, so you can see that this gives you a lot more potential now in things that you can do in terms of having this thing store its own history. I, I like barely scratched the surface. I have so many better ideas. You probably have good ideas too. But what I at least want to do is expand this now because the point of having done this and encapsulating this entire idea of the history inside of this object Right? The entire, the, capturing the history inside of this object, now what's possible is, let me make this called particles. Let me not have any particles in setup. And let me loop through. I'm going to, let me make an array of all the possible particles. And let me say particles index i dot update. Particles index i dot show. So now what I've done is I've changed the main program from having just this one single particle to starting with an empty array of particles. And any of the particles that are there, they all should update and they all should show. Now, of course, there's none right now. Why? Because we haven't added any. So now what's exciting about this is let's say anytime I click the mouse, let's add, right? Adding something to an array with the push function, new particle. Uh, and let's add it where the mouse is. So 
So now if I run this, look at this. I click there, I click there. All of these objects are all storing their own history. And I can just keep making many of them. So this is pretty great. <laughs> um, because now, you know, and just to demonstrate that the background is 100% is the background is not being erased, I can have something else move. Uh, I'm going to just move frame count modulus width. I don't know if this is going to work. Boy, I'm like, ah, let me not do this. I'm just going to say frame count zero, uh, frame count height. Just to see, like, there's something moving across the screen that is not drawing a trail. So we can have some things draw a trail. We can have a lot of control over that trail, being that what's the size of that trail? Um, do the objects, uh, do they change color? Do they animate? That sort of thing. So let me, uh, I'm like too addicted to this. I'm like at 15 minutes, you can just stop this and do something else. But I want to do a couple more things with this. So you see this basic example. One thing that I think would be useful to demonstrate is to see that a common thing that you'll want to do is actually draw the trail as, uh, oh, I'm, I'm over here now. So a common, <laughs> come on button. A common thing that you might want to do is with this object, draw the trail as a continuous set of lines, like that. And a way of doing that is with a begin shape and end shape. So I'm going to comment out the ellipse. And I can say begin shape at, bef at the beginning of the loop and end shape at the end of the loop and just say vertex pause.x pause.y. So what I'm actually doing here is making a new shape that's going to appear on the screen and all of the vertices of that shape are going to be made up of the history of that object. So if I run this and click, you can see that shape. Now weirdly enough, that shape is closed and it has a fill. So a couple things I want to do is I want to say no fill. The other thing I might want to do is I, I think I want to make this, let this be a lot longer. And let this be 100. And uh, we can run this. And you can see now, you can see that it's drawing this like squiggly line. And again, if you change this to have it move more smoothly or with some other different algorithm, you can imagine how useful this might be. And again, I can have all of them continue to do this. Now, here's the other thing that's amazing about this. Not only do we have this history stored as data, but because we have this history stored as data in an array, those things can change. So there's no reason why I couldn't say while the object is moving in its update function, right? Its update function does what? It changes the x and y location, then it stores a copy of that x and y location in its history. But there's no reason why while it's moving, I couldn't also loop through the entire array and have hist uh, and I, I always forget the this. This I could say this dot history index i dot x move randomly and index i dot y move randomly. So what I've added here is I'm saying, aha, in addition to the object's location moving, its history, those points also move as well. So now if I draw something, you can see that its history is kind of like undulating as it moves as well. All those vertices, vertices have their own kind of motion to them. So again, I don't really like necessarily my own visual result here because the only thing I'm using as the driving force behind the motion is randomness. But you could imagine what sort of possibilities might there be there in terms of a creature design, um, in terms of color, in terms of smooth motion, in terms of oscillating motion. Uh, boy, like having all of those points like sort of oscillating as if it's like a waving fish or something or a waving snake. There's just so many possibilities. So I hope that I'm going to upload this code example, complete this, upload this video, upload the code example, make a P5 version, make a processing version. If you make something built off of this example, please share it with me in the comments. Uh, I don't understand how this video became 20 minutes long, but it did. And I hope that you found it somewhat useful. <laughs> Goodbye and see you in the next video someday. Uh...